Hello everyone, welcome to Banished, a top-down city management game taking place in the medieval age. Now seeing how I have an overwhelming ratio of management games under my review belt, I've taken it upon myself to play even more of them. Believe it or not, this game launched to a lot of hype, at least as much hype as you can afford from popular YouTubers at the time, which wasn't really that much, and frankly, I think the game feels incomplete, but I'll talk about that later. As far as the game goes, it is indeed a game. The worst part is, I enjoyed it at first. At first being the keywords here. I'll get into that more in a bit. To explain the art style of the game, I could really only say it's the lowest amount of effort you can put into the style while still making it as boring as possible. And the graphics quality is acceptable for management games. It'll run on most systems. The water effects bug me sometimes, but it has very few graphical glitches. It's all around fine, graphics-wise. The sound and music is, in this game is messy, to say the least. The music specifically. It sounds like a Dungeons & Dragons-themed band made by people with little to no musical talent. Just twanging on a lute until something that sounds good enough comes out. This game is just a constant string of good enoughs. The gameplay is trying to not let your villagers die, but by the Emperor does the game try and kill them. The game uses what I've titled the cycle of never enough, with which the game will always make sure you have never enough of something. You have villagers, but you don't have enough food, so you make more farms. Now you have a lot of farms and a lot of villagers, you need more tools for the farm, so you make more blacksmiths. But now that you have more tools, more farms, and more villagers, you need more woodcutters to keep all the people warm in the winter. Now that you have all this stuff, you need more villagers to operate it all. Now that you have more villagers, you need more farms, etc, etc, until the world fucking explodes. Not only that, but if you don't keep b building houses, you can't get more population. Not to mention the premium on space. You need a lot of room for farms. But you need to keep building houses, because some old curmudgeon doesn't want to give his house to his kids and go live in the boarding house, you old fucking bastard. Frankly, the gameplay is just frustrating. Another thing is, once you build a town hall, you get requests from nomads to immigrate into your village. Never accept these guys. All they do is bring disease and eat your food. Unless you just had a, max, a mass exodus of life from your village, they're never worth it. If Trump's not building the wall, I will. Okay, so about those issues I was getting into earlier. This game tricks you into thinking it's a good game. It lures you in with promises of fun and good memories, but after a few hours of playing, you start to notice all the game's bigger flaws. And it becomes very easy to game the systems. After maybe three hours of gameplay, you'll have built every building and basically finished the game. The only objective after that is expanding your population, which will almost always end in disease or disaster, or both if you're me. One major issue besides the music and gameplay is the price. You have to pay $21 for this game. Mind you, this is in Canadian money, so it's probably more about 45 cents for you, uh, you, you, you boys down south. But if you work hard for your money, I would not recommend this game. There are several reviews on Steam that will swing you in one way or the other, but in my opinion, it's not worth it. Save your money, buy RimWorld. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and just so everyone knows now, I'm open to suggestions. If you did enjoy, leave a like so I can feel like it's worth my time to do these videos. Also subscribe if you want to see more games that I'll shit on in the future. But for now, I'll leave you. This has been Thievish Logan, also known as Mega749, and I'm out of here.